Hi, welcome back to the channel. It's week six, and we're gonna try to get on some sort of regular schedule again. Go in three, two, one, go! thought to grab my camera and bring it with me on a Monday. I am on my way to the high school to do uh, FCA with the high school cross country team and then I'm going to attempt to run their workout. Um, it's a few laps around the track and then what they call a perimeter run which I don't it's around the school I guess and our school is on a hill basically so that'll be fun and then another few laps around the track. So Monday is usually uh, an easy run day, so that's why I do do things like this on easy run days with the, with the kids. So um, you might see a little bit of how I'm feeling during this perimeter run. Also, it's 78 degrees outside, according to my car. So hooray for it not being 80 or above. What are you doing, little buddy? All right, I'm home from what ended up being three miles for me. Um, tell you what, if, if, our, if our cross country teams really, you know, really take to heart, you know, putting the, all the effort they can into running around our campus, it is so hilly. Hills will never be a problem for them. Um, but I did three miles, which is good, felt good. My heart rate was, you know, crazy high because it was like 80 degrees. Uh, but tomorrow I have some sort of workout and I don't remember what it is, but I will see you tomorrow. Tells me when the light changes color and everything, that's fun, because I don't know, sometimes I get confused. It's like, it's green. Okay, we better go now. Sorry you had to wait for a nanosecond before we got moving. Don't you love your little helper husbands? Aren't they fun? Yes. We always know how fast we're going with our little helper in the park. They let us know. Hi. Guess what day it is? It's Friday. Y'all. These last couple of weeks, and then I have a feeling the next couple of weeks, leading up to this first race in my series of proof of time races it's gonna be rough um let's see tuesday gosh i don't honestly even remember what i did tuesday and wednesday but um you know i didn't run yesterday and last night as you saw in the previous clip went to the comedian Tim Hawkins, his show. So, I supposedly got enough sleep last night even though we got back late, but I think just this week, emotional strain, I'm exhausted. I fell asleep on the couch for about 45 minutes right before this. But, um, before I forget, uh, don't, for, don't forget about my raffle for St. Jude. I'll insert some pictures of the items. You got two weeks left. I'll be drawing the winner September 30th. Link is in the description. Uh, right now, I was supposed to have a, actually it was supposed to be yesterday, an interval workout, but didn't happen. And I didn't really want to do it before my eight miles tomorrow. So, I'm just out here on my street, running by feel. I'm going to stay out here for at least 45 minutes. It's after 2 in the afternoon, so it's a little bit warm, but it feels nice to be out in the sun. I haven't been outside a whole lot with new work stuff, so I think my body might just be craving a little bit of sunshine. But, yeah, so, catch you in just a second.
Girl. You wanna go outside? You wanna go out in the backyard? Okay. <laughs> Alright, so my favorite way to come to you is, oh shower, nice wet hair. So I remembered what I did earlier this week. I did a tempo run. <laughs> Um, you know, I like I think I shared on here earlier, ran with the high school on Monday. Um, and Wednesday, I just did a balloon lady walk. Oh, Sadie hit the camera. Sorry. Um, and that was pretty much when things started to decline was Wednesday because that was all the energy I had. And yesterday, with everything, all my running around before the show, zero energy. And today, I was running with the negative energy, too. But I was able to get a three and a half done in that uh, it was a little less than 45 minutes. So um, something exciting that happened. Uh, and I will put all of her information in the description, but um, a small business, Natural Selection. Um, she, oh, hi, hi, okay. <laughs> she was um, offering up her creations for a donation to Kelsey's Hope. Um, and I'm like, of course, love Kelsey's Hope and her stuff look cool. So I'm going to put in a clip here. I got this ginormous double bag. And the video does not do it justice how big it is. But I'm very excited. It turned out awesome. She has got a talent. Because, I mean, like, this is a handmade thing. Um, so very, very, very excited. Love it so much. Um, so visit her Instagram or, you know, all the things I'll put down in the description. I don't know if she's still taking donations for, um, for products. But... You can probably see it on her on her stuff if she still is, but that was super exciting. All right, so tomorrow, eight miles. It's been a while. So, yay! I'll see you in the morning. Are you ready to talk about our topic for the week? Are you ready to talk about the topic? You ready? Oh my gosh, the head tilt. Okay, so as you saw in the picture, because it's all, all I have to share, I did my eight miles. Um, it actually went well. I feel like it went really, really well. Um, I can't remember the last time I ran eight miles. Um, it felt pretty good. Um, I'm a little, I'm just now realizing getting this close to the uh, 10K race that not very many of my workouts up to this point have involved race pace. But I feel fairly confident that I'll that I can I can get the proof of time, you know, if I don't get too nervous and you know do my the eating properly and any all of that. So before I forget to mention it, um, actually let me mention this first. Notice I'm wearing long sleeves and pants because it is finally cooling down. It was in the low 50s this morning. It was amazing. Um, so that's going to be good for race day, if it, you know, keeps with that. Also, keep forgetting to mention, happy first we official week of Dumbo Double Dare training. Um, if my math is correct, this would have been the official first week if that is the only race you, or challenge you are training for, unlike me, who has like five races between now and then. So, happy first week. Um, and I do believe next week I will be able to talk about Disneyland medals. So excited. So, uh, our the name of our chapter this week, we're on chapter five. Uh, it's called Love the Easter Bunny, um, which I thought was an interesting title. Doesn't lend much to what the topic might be. Um, but he shares a story about one of his daughters who lost a tooth, and I, I wonder how many parents have done this. Puts it under a pillow, and the parents just completely forgot to do the whole tooth fairy thing. So very quickly he's trying to come up with a way to like cover for this. So the next morning when he realizes he forgot, he you know, writes a note real fast. And I guess I guess kind of somehow slyly puts it under her pillow and it's like this whole thing about how, you know, got really busy, but then the tooth fairy wanted her to hunt for the for the, you know, the money or whatever. Um, but instead of signing it from the tooth fairy because it's really early and he's tired, he wrote love the Easter bunny. So then they had to come up with a whole story that sometimes the Easter Bunny helps the Tooth Fairy when the Tooth Fairy's busy. So, all of that. Um, so he relates that to how sometimes, at various points in our life, maybe God can feel like a fairy tale. 
Uh, and he says, as a kid, I'm not sure I saw much of a difference between God, the Easter Bunny, or Santa. To my adolescent mind, they did have more than a few things in common. I couldn't see them. If I was good, they would bring me things. And I heard a lot more about them around the holidays. In time, the fairy tales of childhood inevitably reveal themselves for what they are. Fairy tales. And in our lives, God reveals himself for who he is. Uh, and there's a verse he shares, Romans chapter 1, verse 20. For ever since the world was created, people have seen the earth and sky. Through everything God made, they can clearly see his invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature. So they have no excuse for not knowing God. I, I love that verse uh, because that's I'm a nature person, so... I, I love being outside. That's why I, you know, I try to hike when I can, even though I'm not very good at hiking, <laughs> as seen in previous videos. But I do love hiking. I love being outside. Um, you know, the whole sunrise on a beach or sunset on a beach, just that whole that whole thing. Um, it's one of my favorite places just to sit and just glory of the wonder of God is just amazing. Love it. Um, so he uh, talks about uh, going into a story about Zechariah. If you remember in the Bible, Zechariah, um, uh, God had promised that they were going to have a child. It's one of those classic Bible stories that God promised they were going to have a child, but they were old and didn't, you know, didn't believe him, blah, blah, blah. So he took away Zechariah's voice until the day that his child was born. And then um, Zechariah got his voice back and praised God when he did. So... Uh, Matthew West shares a story about how he actually um, had a season of silence, and it was kind of intense for him. Um, it says, the reason for my silence, three words that are often the kiss of death for a singer, vocal cord surgery. Many careers have fallen under the knife only to fall off of the music industry's radar shortly after. A hemorrhage blood vessel had caused my left vocal cord to become completely paralyzed, and after weeks of rest, the doctors informed me that surgery was my only option. My concerts were canceled indefinitely, and my songwriting appointments too. I couldn't make any progress in the recording studio on my next record. Kind of need a voice to do that. Everything came to a screeching halt, and I was forced to wait. Wait in silence. And um, it was hard for him to do that. Um, but he talks about how he would go. He has, um, I, I'm assuming he's talking about the place that he always shares on his Instagram, which I think he calls the Story House, which is just like this, this place that he's built away from his, you know, residential part it's on his property and that's where he goes to write his music and all of that but he would go out there um and would journal and just you know silently you know pray to god but in that he talks about in that time of silence where sometimes there was just a one-way communication of him talking previous to god he was hearing a lot from god now because he was able to stay silent and really listen so some things that he learned uh, during that time in my f real fear, I found his real presence. The Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty one who will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you by his love. He will exult over you with loud singing. That's from Zephaniah. In my real weakness, I found his real power. Fear not, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. That's from Isaiah. And in my real confusion, I found his real plan. But the Lord's plan stands firm forever. His intentions can never be shaken. And that's from the Psalms. So his um, Hello My Name Is is Hello My Name Is Believer. So this is actually a good name tag to have for, uh, for this chapter, good name tag. God promises in Jeremiah 29, 13 through 14, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. I will be found by you. And, uh, Previous to that last page there, what I just read, um, his little uh, subtitles for the sections are part of the, one of my favorite verses is, Be still and know that I am God. Um, and being still is sometimes a really hard thing. So, like, with new responsibilities helping with our with our business now, I feel like I'm constantly moving and, you know, getting, getting my normal chores done, making sure that I'm staying up to date with work things and you know, all of this. Uh, so being still sometimes is really hard, but it's important to have that quiet time. I tell all of my middle and high school kids how important it is to try to find time, morning or evening. It's a, morning, I think, is best because it just sets up a good tone for your day to have that quiet time and just say, God, help me get through today and, you know, glorify you in doing it. 
So the main, uh, t you know, the main lesson for this week is that while we have fairy tales, um, and hello, this is, you know, a Marin Disney blog, and we love a good, a good Disney fairy tale story, that, um, while, you know, we grow up and we find out who Fairy Easter Bunny, not exactly who we thought they were, God is, God is exactly who he says he is, um, and that's so comforting. It really is. I hope everyone's doing well. If you're starting Dumbo Double Dare training, uh, welcome to the club. Uh, I hope your first week went well. Be sure to give this video a like. Comment if you are doing the challenge um, in Disneyland or any of the races in Disneyland. Are you looking forward to seeing the medals next week? So excited. Uh, be sure to subscribe. Um, this, is a, this next week will be my last hard week. And then we'll have a little week of easy taper before uh, the race. I can't believe it's already here. Um, I feel like I've been thinking about this for a really long time and it's already here. This first proof of time race. Ugh. Always remember that you are God's masterpiece and I'll see you next week.